I've been using the desktop interface called GNOME for several years now, and I can't believe it. I'm switching to KDE. Wow, what an experience. I'm talking about KDE Plasma on Kubuntu 25.10. I go by the name OSY Guy. I'm an open source guy from the state of Wyoming. Over about a dozen years, I've been using several different Linux distros, and almost all of them use the GNOME desktop environment, with the exception of Linux Mint, which uses the Cinnamon desktop environment. Both of those experiences are quite similar and familiar feeling. When I step into KDE, I always feel like it's just a bit unfamiliar and uh, uh, feels like foreign territory for a while, but I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can step into this KDE environment and have a very streamlined experience. We'll be looking at the latest version of Kubuntu, which is 25.10. It features the kernel 6.17, and there is also a very well-configured graphics platform called Wayland. That's the up-to-date graphics platform in, in the Linux world. They also have three repositories that I think are uh, very complete. The Ubuntu repository, of course, is, uh, is always there. But in addition, you can activate the Flatpak repository called Flathub. And there is also, of course, the Snap repository that's, that's just standard in all Ubuntu um, distributions. I don't use Snap, but I do use Flatpak a lot. And it is featuring the latest version of KDE Plasma version 6.4. Extensive customizations are possible in the KDE desktop environment just through the use of the program called System Settings. Now there is so much detail and so much possibilities within that particular application. I think it's good to just kind of narrow, narrow down the settings to the essential settings that I'm showing here on my, on my slide. So we're going to open up System Settings here and we'll take a look first at mouse and touchpad and then screen edges. Now by default this very top left corner is activated as overview like this. And so if I nudge my mouse in the top left hand corner I get an overview showing. And so that overview uh, that might be referred to as uh, in GNOME, it's the Activities Overview. They just simply call it Overview here in KDE. I prefer not to have that, that corner activated, so I'll uh, select No Action and then Apply. And the reason for that, I do like that particular view, but there's a keyboard shortcut already assigned to it. It's Super W, which is, I would call it the Workspace Overview, in KDE. So you can see that I've, I'm running three different application uh, windows in, in my first desktop and then I, I'm running a total of three desktops across the top here. And incidentally in this overview you can add desktops if you want to. So these are workspaces in the, in the uh, GNOME environment but they're called desktops or virtual desktops in KDE. So I've got now four desktops. I'll hit plus again. Now I've got five possible desktops. And these are all removable also. If I just go to the top right hand corner of each desktop, I can set, select delete virtual desktop. And I typically use about three desktops. That's what I'm comfortable with. So I always have that showing. Now there's another way to actually activate that. I'll, I'll show you that in system settings but I just wanted you to see this in here just so you can see the, the, um, the effect of that overview that is possible. And like I say, I turn off the overview as far as the, the uh, screen version of it. And I just use the keyboard shortcut. Now I'm going to go to keyboard. And in keyboard, I'm going to select shortcuts. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says Window Management. It used to say KWIN. They decided to change that to Window Management, which is a little bit easier to understand for somebody who's not been a long-time KDE user. I change some shortcuts in here, like Close Window, 
which the default is always Alt F4 for all kinds of distributions of, of Linux and for Windows for that matter. Um, I don't like Alt F4 because if you have a keyboard that is a, um, it, it, it is a laptop style keyboard, then Alt F4 sometimes becomes a three key shortcut where you have to hold down the FN key also. So I just pop in here and uh, add in Alt Q, which is my favorite shortcut for quitting a window. And you just simply do it by clicking on Add and then it's waiting for you to type in something. So if I type in Alt Q, then it goes like that. Now I already have Alt Q assigned in there, so uh, it, it warns me that, that I have a conflict there, but uh, actually I already have it in place, so I'll just say cancel. Now I like to move my, my window around this way. And so I do that with uh, by, by looking in the search window in here, I'd like to center a window. So I'll type in center. And here you'll see that I have uh, um, already have configured the window meta uh, left bracket as my shortcut key. So that requires a little bit of explanation. Let me slip over to my other window here where you can see um, uh, layout on my keyboard. Right above the enter key are these three keys, left bracket, right bracket, and backslash. I treat those as move the window to the left, move it to the center, move it to the right. And those are all done with the super key, which I need to explain there. The super key, that's the, the key that is uh, des described in GNOME as the Windows logo key. That's the super key. In KDE, they don't call it the super key, they call it the meta key. So whether it's Windows logo or super or meta, those are all the same keys. So I assign super or meta uh, right bracket for, for going to the center of the screen, left bracket for going to the left of the screen, and uh, backslash to go to the right of the screen. So you can see here that I've added uh, meta right bracket. And uh, so just use the, the uh, search over here to find these. So if I type in left, here's window left, and you can see that I added the, this in. And all you have to do is just click on add and then press the, the keys that you would like to use. If there's a conflict, it'll let you know. And sometimes you can, you say, well, I don't care about that conflict. And so you can override uh, the warning. And uh, likewise, I'll do right here. And so here's move window to the right. So you can see how I, I configured all of those. Okay, now let's go to window management. I'll just quickly show you this one to you. This was the one that I already did by being in the in the overview view. So if I go to virtual desktops, this is where you can add desk, desktops. But like I say, I was pressing super W or meta W. And uh, then as I did that, I, I could actually add the desktops or remove them up here. So um, this window management section isn't quite as critical for me because I do it by another method there. I go to search and in file search, I put a check mark in enabled next to file indexing. That makes it possible for me to do searches for not just programs, but also files. So if I press the meta key or the super key, then that opens up my application launcher down here and I pop right into a search window. So if I type in Devil's Tower like that, then you can see that I can pull up a, a photo of Devil's Tower. So I can I can do searches uh, either from down here or there, there's a more uh, long time search uh, keyboard shortcut was Alt Space, which brings up this this view instead. And uh, 
So uh, either one of those will, will allow you to search for both programs and in this case with the check mark here, you can look for files as well. I go to screen locking and change this to never. It is set uh, by default when you first step in here, it's set for five minutes. The screen will lock and I, I don't want it to lock ever so I switch it to never. And if I go down a little bit farther, power management, this is set by default to be sleep. So I'll click on apply and I don't like it to sleep after, uh, after inactivity. I just like to leave it alone. So I switch this over to do nothing and you get this, this warning that uh, there'll be higher energy consumption. I sort of don't care. I, I just don't want it to ever suspend. So I select apply. And then if I just change my categories over here to a different category and then come back over to that power management, then I'm no longer getting that, that uh, error message. And I do like it set to do nothing. I go into software update. Uh, by default, it is set to manually update software. I switch it to automatically. You have the option for daily, weekly, and monthly. I like it to be automatically daily, and then I, I select apply system updates after rebooting, which then means that my updates just go into place uh, at night after I've shut down the computer, and then I start it up the next morning, then all of my updates are just going in automatically, which I, I, I like to not be bothered with those updates. Uh, it's not that important for me. In auto start, I install my client of Nextcloud and Nextcloud I like to have synchronized all the time as I log into my computer I, I, I like the idea that the Nextcloud desktop is automatically synchronized shows up right down here on the on the uh, system tray and so I can see that the last sync was successful but that's not going to happen unless I add Nextcloud desktop in auto start so I had to select add new and then application and then open up utilities and then I find the next cloud desktop here. So those are all the essential tweaks that I like to do in system settings. Here are a couple of tweaks that I make to the Dolphin file manager and to the Discover software center. Let's take a look at Dolphin first. I'll have you take note that my my home folder is displaying in alphabetical order and you'll have to take my word for it here, but as I open up downloads, uh, I will just say that this folder is sorted by latest download at the top of the list. And so if I show you how I did that, it'd be a right click on the window and then select sort by modified newest first. The problem with Dolphin, the default setting is that if you make a change to this window, then all other windows looking at other folders will display the same way. And I don't want them all to display the same way. I want them to be different. And uh, so I, I kind of like to have a custom display for each individual folder. So the way that that is accomplished is by going to the hamburger menu here and then configure and then configure Dolphin. The very first window here shows show on startup folders, tabs, and window state from the last time. And the second option is my home folder. And so I, I don't want to be looking at my, my uh, download folder and then close Dolphin, open it back up again, and then Dolphin is showing me the download folder again. I like to have it always come back to my home folder. So I do make this first uh, change here. I change from the first option to the second option. In view, the first option is the default. Use common display style for all folders. And uh, so if you're doing searches and you're, uh, you're, you're looking for recent files at the top and that kind of thing, uh, unfortunately this would be not the best choice. I like the second option again where the, the, you're telling Dolphin to remember the display style for each folder. And so I make that second change there. Now in Dolphin, uh, no, I'm sorry, in 
in Discover, the Software Center, I'll have you take a look at Settings, and you'll see that FlatHub is listed up here at the top of the list, but when you first look at this section, that will not be the case. There will be a dialogue at the bottom saying something about uh, uh, missing backends, and it will mention Flatpak. And so uh, if you activate that down at the bottom and then close the Discover window and you open it back up again, you will see that flat pack is listed across the top here, but it'll also say add a source and it'll say add flat hub. So you have to basically take that second step so that you make the flat hub repository the default repository for your flat packs. So you uh, click on the Add Flat Hub, close the, the window, open it back up again, and then you'll see that Flat Hub is listed at the top. And you can make the, the, the changes uh, between this source and Snap, and the regular Ubuntu repository can be made default. And uh, since I use Flatpak so often, I always make that one my default source. I decided to turn off my webcam so I've got a little bit more screen real estate here so that I can show you some of the configurations of the panel. It's good to understand how the panel works in KDE. All the components in the panel are called widgets. So on my panel, starting from left to right, the first thing is application launcher, and then pager, and then task manager, weather report, system tray, digital clock. So if I right click on my panel and I select show panel configuration, I'll hover my mouse at the bottom left corner and you see that that first item is called application launcher. Next to it is pager. Next to it is the task manager where all my favorite program icons are located. Next to that is weather report, something I added for my local weather. Next to that is called system tray and then finally, the last item is called Digital Clock. There was one time when I made the terrible mistake of clicking on Delete Panel right here. I didn't know how to get back a default panel, and so I was dead in the water. That happened about a year ago. That was like a deal breaker for me. Uh, don't ever do that uh, unless you know how to reconstruct a panel. Actually, it's kind of cool. There's actually a spot right here where it says Add Panel. And if I selected uh, uh, default panel or Kubuntu default panel, either one, I would get that entire panel that I that I uh, deleted. I could get it right back again. So just good to know that you can bail yourself out there if you make that mistake. This section at the at the top left that's called Add or Manage Widgets. That's where you can you can search for widgets and you can add and remove widgets and try different ones. Uh, if you would like a different appearance or a different configuration for your panel, this is where you do it. I'll type in weather, and you can see that weather report shows up right there. You just click and drag and drop it off, and you're good to go. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'll just go ahead and add, select add an empty panel. And so the panel shows up here at the top, and then I can select widgets. And then I can add something like uh, maybe uh, uh, let's just let's just put in task manager, and then I'll just drop it off like that. And of course, I can go in and uh, reconfigure this so that it is not uh, showing on the far right corner. I can just say let's uh, fill the width. We'll say fit the content instead, so it shows up right in the middle like this. And I actually don't want that panel, so I'll just delete it. I just wanted you to see how that, that whole uh, panel configuration works. It's not particularly hard, and uh, now that you've seen how it's constructed, uh, you can certainly um, go in and see if you can make some changes, and you can, you can bail yourself out. There is a default panel you can bring back. That's my quick overview of Kubuntu. 25.10. Thanks for watching.